I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 2, so let's focus on verses 5 through 7. David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, The Lord bless you, because you have shown special kindness to Saul, your Lord, when you buried him. Now may the Lord show special kindness and faithfulness to you, and I will also show the same goodness to you, because you have done this deed. Therefore be strong and courageous, for though Saul, your Lord, is dead, the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. David was not only a man of faith, a good shepherd, and a mighty warrior, David was also a great politician. And in his statement to the men of Jabesh Gilead, perhaps the most staunch Saul supporters in all of Israel, David is sincerely complimentary. He's blatantly political and earnestly evangelistic all at the same time. Saul was dead, and the people could not merely live on the fumes of his memory. I've seen a lot of churches that way. Faithfully believing God's promise that David would rule Israel as a king, David took very little time establishing his kingdom. And he did it tribe by tribe. Revisiting a page, perhaps, from his Goliath playbook, David went for the biggest giant first. Jabesh Gilead had always been pro-Saul, all the way down to the man. Ever since Saul rescued them on his first military campaign back in 1 Samuel chapter 11, the men of Jabesh Gilead were brave and they they were used to taking risks. David was urging them to take another risk. Be the first in the north to acknowledge the kingship of David. So David called Jabesh Gilead to submit to the newly developing kingdom of God in Hebron. David's call was authoritative and yet somewhat winsome. It was commanding and attractive at the same time. Doesn't it remind us of another such call? Matthew 11, verse 29, Jesus said this, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, we know what the yoke means. It is nothing less than absolute submission. But Jesus' call, His command to us, is also winsome. He attracts us both with His appeal, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and His promise, you will find rest. Jesus does not hide His yoke, along with the fact that we may be lonely in that yoke. He lures us by His person and by His promise. And when we share the gospel with others, well, it should carry those exact same elements. The right response to David's appeal and Jesus' appeal could be costly. Jabesh Gilead was sandwiched between David and Abner, between the true kingdom in its mustard seed form and the illegitimate kingdom that expects allegiance. So to defy the latter kingdom takes guts, and such guts can only come from grace. Remember, this is not a conflict between Israel and some other nation. This is internal. So also, the believers of our generation are often forced to decide which faith professors have truly aligned with God's kingdom, which preachers out there are really living and preaching the word. And only the Holy Spirit, working through your personal pursuit of the Bible, God's Word will enable you to choose which leaders that you will follow. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And if you are being ministered to through the Bible teaching of Groundworks Ministries, and you would like to help us reach this generation with the gospel, would you consider becoming a monthly donator to Groundworks Ministries today? Donating is secure and it is easy at our website. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.